Hey everybody, and happy Friday! In today's episode of Dungeons & Dragons Horror Stories, we have a tale about a dungeon master that has a strange view about one-shots, a story about rolling con saves for a strange reason, and much more. So, without further ado, let's get into the stories. Campaign Died Before It Even Started By Reddit user Lone Wolf RHV. Well, as the title said, this horror story happened before we even had a first session. I have posted here before about my first time being a DM. In short, everything went wrong, but me and two other people decided to play just the three of us, and for years, everything went reasonably well. But since this story is posted on this sub, I think you can guess that it's not going so well anymore. There might be some spelling mistakes, since English is not my first language, but please bear with me. So, me, the Paladin, and the Ranger, as I'll be referring to them by their character classes, weren't playing in any campaigns for a while now. They didn't like the DM, and I had very little free time because of college and work, but lately I had been missing DMing, so I asked both of them if they would be interested in continuing our old campaign or starting a new one, which I had a premise in mind for. I explained the new idea to them, and they both liked it, but also wanted to continue the old one, so they suggested that both campaigns were happening in the same universe, but on different continents, so that maybe later on, they could visit the locations and NPCs of our old campaign. I thought the idea was interesting, and since both had more or less the same theme, we decided to do that. But, of course, it would take quite a bit of time to create the new NPCs, cities, cultures, etc. of this new continent, so I decided to double check with them if they really wanted to play. They both said yes, so I started spending almost all my free time on it. As I had expected, it took me a long time to organize everything. We played on Discord, so I had put everything there in separate channels. The only thing left for them was to make their character sheets. Ranger made his sheet on the same day, excited to begin, but the Paladin, not so much. We waited without bothering her, one week, two, three, and we kept waiting for a month and a half. She kept talking to us normally, but when we asked about the RPG or her character sheet, she always got mad and said, I'll do it in my time. I was furious. A month and a half, and she had not even started yet. I had asked several times before if they really wanted to play this campaign. They always said yes, and I always told them that I would prefer them to throw a no in my face rather than keep stalling, but they insisted that they wanted to continue, including the Paladin, so I spent all the little free time I had to get it done as soon as possible. And when it's her turn to make just one simple character sheet, she doesn't. I deleted everything and told them that I wasn't going to DM anymore, since I barely remembered the things I had written there and the plans I had for the future of the campaign. More than a month of waiting and with no sign of it starting, it just really killed all of my enthusiasm for it. The Ranger was pretty sad about this, but he and I had talked before and neither of us wanted to play with just two people. And about the Paladin's reaction? She sent several shocked emojis, and that's it. Didn't even mention anything, not even an apology for making a fool out of us. If it was a stranger, that'd be fine, but we've been friends for years now. I expected that, at the very least, she would have told me that she lost her will to play before I put together a whole universe for the new campaign. I don't even know if I'm more sad or mad over all this, but yeah, that's the end of it I guess. The game died before it even started, and it took my desire to ever DM anything again with it. Yeah, that must have felt pretty shitty. Taking all the time and care to build a whole world for the players, and then one of the players can't even be bothered to take a little bit of time to build a character. Hopefully, OP has some of the stuff they had written for the campaign saved somewhere, and eventually gets inspiration to try and DM again, this time for Ranger and players that actually appreciate the time it takes to be a DM. Let's move on. 
didn't know one shots were a crime. By Reddit user Jedi Knight Frey. I love these stories and have been listening for about a few weeks now on YouTube. I'm gonna share the story of mine that's not much of a horror story compared to most of these here, but I'm fairly new to D&D and have been playing for at least a couple months now. A weird preference of mine is I just like doing one shots. I've been a little too nervous to join an ongoing story, so this one time I found a nice looking one shot. I'm a sci-fi nerd and this was a sci-fi one shot, so of course I joined the discord, read it over, and decided that I'd like to join the session. The DM at first seemed cool. He gave us all a few days to get our characters ready and he just asked for a minimal backstory. Then when the day came, we were supposed to get the show on the road. We were all in voice chat talking, getting to know each other, and the DM asks us what was the best long-term story we've been part of. This, surprisingly, was where the trouble started. I told him that I've only done a bunch of one-shots, no long-term stories yet. This, for some reason, was a problem with him. He told me that I'm not allowed to be part of his games unless I have proper experience with actual D&D and that I need to leave otherwise. I asked how being a part of a long-term story was considered proper experience, and he went on rambling about how long-term stories are what D&D is actually for, not a bunch of crummy one-shots. We ended up arguing about my preference for a good 15 minutes, until I probably pettily replied, you know, you're running one of these crummy one-shots, right? Silence fell in the voice chat for a second, and then he kicked and banned me from the server. This so far is the only bad experience with d and I've had thankfully, and I've went on and played a lot of good games since then. While I like longer campaigns and an overarching story, one-shots can be just as fun as a years-long campaign. My question is, why was the DM so concerned about someone having experience in long campaigns when he himself was going to be running a one-shot? If anything, you would think he'd be psyched to have someone with more experience with one-shots than not. I'd say getting booted was probably the best thing for OP in that instance. You keep on living your one-shot enjoying life, OP and I hope you don't acquire any more horror stories after that one. Let's move on. Start campaign being revived to learn that we shit ourselves. By Reddit user DnDDude123. This is more dumb than horror, but felt like it still belongs here. So this was about two years ago, and while I don't care, it honestly always grossed me out and felt dumb. My friend ran a game for me and four other people, and the premise was cool. When you die, you can come back at a cost. It could be your race changes, your class, your memories, etc. It starts with us all dead, talking to some higher being. And when we are revived, we are all asked to make a con save. We all fail, and are told, as we awake, that we realize that we shit ourselves. None of us knew what the DC was and every time we died during that time and came back, it was the same thing. Make a con save or shit yourself. The DM found it funny, but the rest of us didn't. Eventually, it fizzled out as several people started grad school and several were busy with work and moving. We are all still friends and make jokes about it and play other games, but it just always sat weird with me. If you want to use this concept, go ahead. It's cool and can allow for some fun stuff. Maybe just leave out the poop part. Well, that just sounded shitty. I'll see myself out. But for real, that concept sounds like it could be pretty cool and fun to play. But like OP said, without the poop. Let's move on. The DM who switched systems to avoid high-level players by Reddit user Darkwater0. So, I was in a campaign that lasted about 12 months. I was playing an elf wizard named Zerna, and he was fun to play. We began in D&D &D 5e and had a fun time, 
We began at level 1 and crawled our way to level 3 after 4 months of playing, about 10-15 to 15 sessions I think. Before the campaign, the DM did explain that he was going to use a milestone style leveling system that was a bit slow, but he didn't mention that he was going to be stingy with monetary and magic rewards as well. His campaign was complex with overlapping stories, but a lot of the time we would meet other NPCs who were poor and needed our financial aid, and we had to make the choice between helping others or buying 1-2 healing potions that we desperately needed. After 4 months, a player had to leave and we needed to recruit a replacement. While as there were 4 players, occasionally we'd have 1 or 2 people absent. This new player was enthusiastic, funny, and a keen Pathfinder enthusiast. No complaints about her. It turned out that 2 of the other players were interested in Pathfinder, and the DM had experience running Pathfinder before. So after a few sessions, he agreed to switch over to Pathfinder. He'd switched over to Pathfinder just at the point that we were going to level up, so we assumed that he'd let us make level 4 Pathfinder characters. We turned out to be wrong. After a couple of weeks of preparation, the DM hosted a Session 0 for the new game and explained that we'd be making level 1 Pathfinder characters, because a level 1 Pathfinder character was much more powerful than a level 1 D&D 5e character. We agreed to this, because it seemed like a good way to teach me and the other non-Pathfinder player the new system. This is where I started having problems. There was only one copy of the rulebook, the new players, and the DM would basically hold on to it for the entirety of the sessions. It was clear that he was less familiar with the rules than he'd claimed, and no one else was willing to help me or the other non-Pathfinder player learn our new characters. I was still an elf wizard. With the switchover, the tempo of the sessions shifted dramatically. Combat became a lot slower, especially as we all had to look up the rules often, and the actual story shifted to being more political, with less personal roleplay between characters. On top of all this, it took us another 4 months to get from level 1 to level 4, again. In that time, we had a period of a few sessions where I and another player lost our connection to magic, and were basically depowered for a while. This annoyed me at the time, but once it was over, I was okay with it. Eventually, we all decided we'd prefer to go back to D&D 5e. We came to the DM and asked about switching back to 5e, and he seemed relieved. After our last session wrapped, we sat around and had an informal conversation about the switch to 5e, and how we would treat gained magic items and other stuff. He told us that we would have to give up our magic items, which we agreed to to facilitate the changeover, but he also told us that we'd go back to being level 3 5e characters. Needless to say, we were very unhappy. This felt unjustified, and the conversation quickly escalated into an argument. Eventually, he conceded to making us level 4 D&D 5e characters, but it definitely left a sour taste in everyone's mouths. We went back to 5e and played two more sessions before a bullshit magical effect led to all of us losing our equipment and having to run around in a dungeon without weapons or arcane focuses. At this point, especially after I already experienced the Lost My Connection to Magic story, we gave up and let the campaign die quietly. TLDR DM switched from D&D 5e to Pathfinder 2nd Edition and bounced our level 3 characters down to level 1. We switched back later and our level 4 Pathfinder characters were almost bounced down to level 3 D&D characters. That sounds like that was just a recipe for disaster especially with the DM seeming not to have much experience with Pathfinder, even though he claimed to. A lot of fun in tabletop RPGs is getting your levels up and getting new stuff to play around with, and it sounded like this DM just didn't want to deal with adjusting things and scaling up encounters to facilitate that. That mixed with going back and forth with different systems. It's no surprise that the game just fizzled out. And before we move on to the final story of the day, if you're enjoying the video, 
consider rolling a crit on that like button, as it really helps out a lot. And remember to subscribe and click the bell if you haven't done so already. If not for the stories, then how about for some cats? But with that said, let's get into the story. You shouldn't have called him a bard. By Reddit user, Dungeons and Devils. This one's super tame, and nobody hates each other at the end, so sorry about that. The party was getting ready to go to a spooky place to defeat a spooky guy before he could destroy their home city. On the way out, they hear a bard in a tavern singing about the dismal state of affairs and criticizing the lordship. So they decide to go in and talk to this fella, and the warlock ends up recruiting him to go to the spooky place with them. In response, the bard says, You want me to go to spooky place? Isn't that kind of dangerous? I'm not the cool kind of bard, I can't afford college. The party assures him that he won't be there to fight, but simply to play music and distract the spooky guy. They even pay his wages directly to his poor mum in advance in case he dies, but the warlock may not have paid attention to this part. It went about as you would expect. The bard played his music and distracted the spooky guy, but ended up standing between two party members and died in a big AoE attack. Warlock, as soon as this poor man dies for them, says, Most useless bard ever. Me, offended, respond, He just died doing exactly what you hired him to do. He didn't give me a single inspiration. He didn't have that ability, he was just a commoner. Well, you shouldn't have called him a bard. But he is a bard, just not the cool kind. Like he said, you know what a bard is, right? Uh, no. After having the word explained by the rest of the group, he insisted that I should have just used the word musician, because bard is a class in the game. I said, nah, it's a fantasy world, I'm using fantasy words. For the record, Spooky Guy was defeated, and the Bard, not Bard, helped. TLDR, Warlock marches Commoner to his death, then calls him useless for not having class abilities. Not the worst horror story. In fact, it's more on the comical side. You would think that Warlock, even without knowing what a Bard is, would be able to figure it out just based on context clues, like playing music. Maybe he was just new to fantasy in general. Or he never figured out what a bard was, and at that point, was just afraid to ask. And that is all we have for today. As always, I appreciate all of you, and hope you all have a fantastic weekend. Until next time.